And today on Working the Web to Win, we're going to talk about a technological threat that literally reaches into every household in this nation. Big business uses it to make billions of dollars per year. Consumers and even a number of foreign governments consider it an out-and-out -out invasion of privacy. And cyber criminals look at it as a way to get, into the, get their hand in the cookie jar. Am I talking about eye in the sky surveillance? No, we covered that a couple of weeks ago. Am I railing against Big Brother? Not today. What I'm talking about is the most pervasive and out of control use of our personal data that has ever been perpetuated against the American public. This menace is being used against every man, woman, and child big enough to reach the keyboard, and this clear and present danger has a name. The name is called Big Data. All right, and Nick and I are going to talk about what big, the menaces of big data today. And in fact, during the next 30 minutes, we're also going to show you who's getting rich from the information that you give away freely. We're going to tell you how these people can trick you into divulging your most intimate personal information. And we're going to show you five things that you can do to defend yourself against these digital freeloaders. But before I do that, I'm, I want Hector to give you the calling number so you can join in the conversation today. So for our friends out there in cyber world, I want to give you the phone number. It's 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can also find us on workingthewebdoom.com, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and now YouTube. Um, you know, you're saying about they can, even if a, a child can reach a keyboard. Well, there was a story that I read very recently where Target got in trouble because they sent a catalog to somebody's house because by monitoring the purchasing of the household's daughter, they found out that she was pregnant. So they sent a baby catalog to the house saying, congratulations on your, on your newborn that's coming. And the dad gets this thing and says, what the heck is this? Oh, and start asking oh, about... <laughs> so they don't even have to reach the keyboard. They could be in the womb. <laughs> and they're still getting caught on this kind now of stuff. Now you're scaring me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, that, that was that was one even I hadn't thought of before. But, yeah, yeah. obviously, you know, if you haven't told Dad that you're pregnant, how am I Yikes. told my dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I told my dad I was pregnant, he'd probably be happy all the money I could make on it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we get into the show, uh, we'd also like to thank our sponsors. Yep. I'll let you lead it off. Oh, we want to thank Tub, Tub King and Senior Tub. Of course, they got the coolest bathtubs around, the clawfoot tubs that are used in all the movies, and, of course, the Senior Walk-In Tubs, which is the best way to have, like, a personal spa in your bathroom. Okay, and also we want to thank uh, MedMasters, yep. which is the premier social network for the, me uh, the medical community. Uh, if you're looking to make a connection or stay connected. Or get a job. Or get a job. MedMasters is the way to go. It's the free medical Right. database and social networking for the medical industry. Yeah, and they keep all your stuff private, too. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And then we're going to talk about that because, like you said, it's, it's not a matter of just collecting the breadcrumbs that we leave as we go, you know, okay. through life surfing the web. It's what do people do with it and how can it come back to bite us? Yeah. I mean, the way I look at it, I mean, if you're looking at the big data thing in general, which is not something new. It really started about 30 years ago when... We all started having databases of all kinds where we can collect all kinds of information. But if you look at big data today, it really falls into really five categories. And this sort of follows with the surveillance thing and the things, you know, the whole subject line that we've been talking about, the brave new world that we live in. You have big data for government, which is the NSA, the FBI, mm -hmm. the CIA, the IRS. You know, they're gathering information, all kinds of people. Then you have what I call the Internet Big Data, which is Google, Yahoo, Bing, and then all the social nets. They gather information up the yin-yang, Facebook, you know, Google+, Plus, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, those guys. Big business. Yeah, big business is next. I mean, again, big retailers, the big Internet giants, Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, you know, those kinds of guys. Uh, the next would be like foreign governments, which are actually actively gathering data on American citizens. And then the last and most scariest ones probably cyber the cyber criminals, criminals mm -hmm. because what they're going to do is they're going to go after all these big datas regardless of whose data it is. I mean, they might crack into China's place just to get the stuff that they've been gathering, you know? <laughs> yeah, but for most people, the, the big danger is, you know, cyber criminals, if they can get a hold of your financial information uh, like they did at Target and other or retailers, or right? Yeah. 
uh, you know, that, then you're, you're in a world of hurt because then somebody can use your identity, they can open up other credit card accounts, and there's a million ways in which, you know, they can use big data to, to come back and bite you. Okay. So the, the trick is, first of all, what, you know, where is big data coming from? Where's the data mining originating? What, what part of your daily life or your routine do you need to change to make it more difficult for people to follow those little digital breadcrumbs that you, leave, you, you, know, you leave as okay. you surf the web? And what kind of habits do you need to change if you want to protect your privacy, protect your data, right. and keep people from getting all these free goodies that they can make money with at your expense? Yeah, and again, not all of it is electronic. So, for example, there was one of the articles I read where stores were gathering your zip codes when you were checking out at the register. And what they were telling you was, well, they had to get that information to make the credit card purchase valid, which is not, not true. true. <laughs> and now they're, they're being sued over that because, you know, you're not supposed to do that kind of stuff. And what they were doing was tying the transaction to your location where you live and that kind of stuff so they can follow through on it. Yeah, well, you know what they'll do after this, right? They'll just tie the uh, credit card back to the database because if you've got, especially if you're using a comp uh, you know, credit card from a, a store, huh? they've already got that information. All I right. have to do is cross-reference it. Right. So there's always, you know, every time they, they come up with a law or they come up with some way to stop somebody from gathering information that you don't want them to have, they'll find a way around it. We're going to yeah. talk about some of these ways. Well, I know that, you know, when you go in the store, for example, a lot of people, I see people literally carrying tablets so they could check prices in the store and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and when they're doing that, they're generally on a Wi-Fi network. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Network Nordstrom got in trouble for tracking IP addresses when mm -hmm. you log into their network. Mm -hmm. So now they can track and look and see what you're looking at and so on. Yeah, remember it was about uh, four or five months ago I reported about in London where they actually the, had trash cans. The Wi-Fi trash cans, right. <laughs> the Wi-Fi enabled. So again, when you're walking through the mall, they could follow your digital footprints right. as you went from store to store, window to window. And there, there are several malls in uh, South Korea that this is a normal thing because, I mean, they're really big on doing this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But again, it's not just that they're gathering all this data. They need to be able to protect that data. data. That's correct. And that's the biggest problem right here, mm -hmm. that they aren't able to actually protect the data. No, and we've seen that recently, right. and, and it's getting worse, not better. But what the problem is, is that most of the businesses, all they, they care about is using the information to make more money. In fact, I've got an article right here which says, Intel introduces new 15 core server chips to handle right. big data from the Internet of Things. Right. So it's not just you know, your personal usage that's being tracked. Uga or whatever it's called, It's right? all, because we just had our episode right. about all the smart appliances, right. and they're already web-enabled. And again, a processor with six core, 16 cores or whatever, then you get like eight of those in one machine. Mm -hmm. That's like a data center that's right. in a single box. So they're, they're gearing up to do a lot of this data crunching, and there are companies out there that specialize in this, so you can just gather the data yourself, mm -hmm. upload it to them, and right. they'll give you the answers that you're looking for and so on. I mean, the way I look at it, there's a lot of different kinds of dangers that people really need to think about. You know, I was reading this article, which was really funny. It's sort of in a, I think it was in a Russian magazine, believe it or not, when mm -hmm. you think, you know, security and all that. Um, but the article was talking about how these different organizations are using it for social behavior manipulation, if you will. Social engineering. <laughs> so they can sway you know, our opinions and so on. But, you know, that's just the beginning of the data. You know, swaying our opinions that it's this time of year to wear pink or something, that's right. one deal. But then if they take that data and start using it against you, like denying you for having a driver's license because you just turned 68 or something like that, and they don't know how well you can see or anything like that, mm -hmm. you know, because right now the way it is, you just have to pass a test. Right. You know, but they can start using data to deny, right now your insurance rate goes up based on your credit mm -hmm. score history and so on. Your your uh, health insurance and life insurance can go up based on your credit scores and all those kinds of things too. So the, the invasion of privacy leads to all kinds of abuse of this information. And that's, I think, the biggest danger, other than people stealing all your goods. Right, but the thing is, is that all of these entities are making big, the big data's job so much easier. Because I have an article right here, it's actually from a, a site called the Smart Data Collective. And it says, Facebook's big data, equal parts exciting and terrifying. Right. Because it's not so much a matter of what they're gathering, but what they can do with this data and the fact that they're getting more and more and more of your personal information. And Facebook, Google, all these guys, they're not afraid of using it. I mean, they've right. been using it for their own in internal advertising purposes for some time now. 
Yeah, I, I predict that in the not too distant future, several of these major mega corporations are going to get mega egg on their face. And what that's going to mean is that the consumers who have been using them mm -hmm. are going to have a big falling out mm -hmm. and the negative impact on their bottom line is going to be horrendous. So we know that Google is one of the biggest players on the Internet. they got 82% of search mm -hmm. and so on. But if they have a major data breach that it hurts 100 million people or something or like that. Facebook was or a billion, Facebook, right. right? A billion, two billion. What's going to happen to them? Well, people are going to say, screw you, I'm going to do, I'm going to use this other thing. Mm -hmm. You know, just like Chrome, Chrome was able to leapfrog over the Internet Explorer after 14 years of being in place sure. as the number one browser. Now, because of all the privacy issues, you might see Komodo or some other product jump oh, over yeah. there. Well, and it's not even just the matter of how they're using it to, to gather the information. It's adware. You know, I call it a noiware right. because right. every time I go out on, to like I'm using Chrome and I'll go out and, and research something on the web like for our show. Right. For days or even weeks afterwards, I'm barraged with ads for whatever I happen to be searching the web for. Yeah, you know, and we, where there are other search engines like DuckDuckGo that don't track the, that information, don't provide adware. Like I said, I call it a noiware. Yeah, it's really because you know it's adware. If you know if they showed me once in a while, but if it's up, if it's in my face on every site I go to for for the next two weeks, that gets annoying. And until they realize that, or until people start jumping ship from one platform to another because of the fact that they're just tired of being annoyed I mean that's that that holds a lot of sway well I can tell you one thing that's sort of funny I mean they'll they'll annoy you for months but what they don't really always know is when you make the purchase mm -hmm. so for example a year ago I was getting ready to buy a backpacking tent because I was going right. to go on an 18 mile hike and I bought the tent but for four months after that they were still <laughs> trying to sell me a tent you know? <laughs> and you feel like saying, I have bought the tent. Right, Can you, know. you read that? <laughs> and even when you go in and clear your cookies and all those kinds of things right. at the end of the day, those still are tracking you. Oh, yeah, we want to talk about that, too, because that's where, again, a lot of people you know, miss the boat because they don't, they're not even aware that, that right. these cookies exist. They're not, they're not aware how they work or how they can shake what I call the bugs out of the rug. Because yeah. most of your browsers actually have a facility where you can go in and you can purge your browsing history. You can, you know... Uh, purge the cookies from your browser. But what's a cookie? I mean, it, it's not. It sounds like something sweet and delicious, isn't it? But it's exactly yeah. the opposite. Right. It's something that's tracking every move you make. And you can get it from a bunch of different sources. Anytime that you go and get freeware, free apps. If you go register for a game, a lot of gaming sites require you to just take their cookie for you to even right. be able to play on these, right. you know, multiplayer games. Well, they not just there to lie to play the game. Who knows what else they're doing? Well, it's behind not just the scenes. it's also consoles, smartphones, Everything. smart TVs. I mean, they all can take these cookies. Right. And once the cookie's in there, they're tracking you. Whether you're watching your TV and Netflix or something else. As a matter of fact, I mean, I watch Netflix a lot. Mm -hmm. I get emails for Netflix all the time mm -hmm. saying, "Hey." Season two is coming out. Well, I know that I want to watch season two because I watched the entire season one of that program. Yeah, I mean they're, they're that's tracking. That's work. They're, they're they're in the background. You don't even tracking know they're everything. There. So again, it's a matter of people having to be a little more proactive when it comes to their browsing habits, the platforms that they're using. Unless you just don't care. I mean, we'll talk about it at the end of the show. But on the blog itself, we have a list of items. And again, there's many other articles that we've done that talk about ways that you can protect yourself from cyber criminals and all those kinds of things. But there's a list of five or six things that easy, simple things you can do that you can plug into your browser to give you more privacy. And we'll talk about them later on. Um, one of the things I like to talk about is, you know, when we're talking about the dangers of big data, there's lots of different kinds of dangers. So, for example, you know that you can lose all your financial data. You can also lose all your money. You can lose your, your privilege to do lots of different things. Like, for example, in this country, the government has been trying to figure out a way to get a database on everybody who has weapons or guns or whatever you want to call them. Uh, now they're going to be able to figure out whether you bought it or not by going in and getting the, the big data. Oh, sure. You know, it's they won't have to have the registration well, database. I point out in my blog that uh, all the big, uh, you know, your big players like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, uh, now, of course, they say the government's forcing us to give them that data, but they're not giving it to them because they're getting paid millions of dollars. Right, right. It's not free. <laughs> they don't give it away. But they, they can hold their hands and say, wait, they're holding onto our heads and they us do it. As a matter of fact, last year when Twitter took a loss, mm -hmm. one of the biggest profit centers was these pipelines that they sell. Right. You know, and again, 
Google sells to Twitter, Twitter sells to these guys. They sell these data streams to each other so that they can do search and all that kind of stuff. And it's not right. just Google, it's Yahoo and Bing and all. They're all buying these data streams and they all also sell them to the NSA, the FBI, the CIA. And, and who so knows on. who else? I mean, you're not telling. <laughs> I mean, it's the bottom line. It was like a few years ago, back in 2008, uh, Google got into trouble because at that right. time they were actually selling right. the database or portions of it to you know private companies, and one one company was actually a German magazine called Stern, and they bought a bunch of these uh, names, including name, address, age, a lot of the demographic information, right. and then they started calling the people that were on the list. And these were German nationals, right. and of course these people were not only amazed that they were on these lists, but they were actually quite upset, and it resulted in the, the German lawsuit. government. Yeah, and, and the same thing happened with uh, Facebook, Facebook right. right, over the use of their uh, their facial recognition technology. Right. Because the thing is, in other parts of the world, there are laws against right. how you gather, and what kind of information you gather, and how you can, you know, uh, disseminate it. Yeah. Not over here. There's no speed bumps on, on the information superhighway in the U.S. Well, I know that if, if, if our listeners go on to the blog, and you go into the notes page, mm -hmm. there's several comprehensive articles that you can go in there that talk about a lot of different, the ethics issues and mm -hmm. all the different things. They talk about the lawsuits, they talk about different tools you can use and so on. And I highly recommend that if you're really concerned about these kinds of things, which I think you, every American should be, they should go in there and, and educate themselves by not just listening to the show, because this is only a half an hour show. Right. They need to really go in there and read all these different articles. Sure. And again, this is not a new subject for us. We've been talking, we've probably done a dozen shows on is that cyber security that and all that kind of folks? stuff. We have to cover this stuff. Because like I said, the thing is, is that most people don't realize how vulnerable they are. Yeah. They don't have a clue. Well, it's and it's not, it's actually getting much worse. Every year that we've been talking about this, of course, this, the technologies, the, the 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 servers are getting cheaper. They're getting the 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 now they're using artificial intelligence to go out right. there and do a lot of the work to to sift through all right. the data. I mean, because that's why you know everybody's upset with with the NSA, but they're not the only player in the game. Well, not that the sensors are, are way up the scale. I mean, three years ago there was no such thing as a kiosk in a store that could track you. I mean, that didn't exist. So the technology has taken a big leap forward, mm -hmm. and the censoring of everything on the planet is, I mean, there's sensors everywhere. Right. So while when you walk down through the, the, the aisle at Walmart, the kiosk jumps up and says, hey, buy these That's cookies. Right. I mean, how do they know that? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to the Gap. How those assorted tank tops work out for you? Mr. Yakamoto. <laughs> That's kind of scary. <laughs> You know, this stuff is happening and people just don't really understand. They don't really pay very close attention to it. No. But it's something that's really eroding away well, at our, our privacy and, and, in a and big like way. And like I said, you know, when you're online, first thing you have to realize is you don't own your own data. You really don't. Right. When you sign up for a social network, read the contract. It'll right. tell you, you know, they, you have the right to use their platform, but basically they right. control how that information is used. They sort of say, I mean, for example, Facebook tries to tell you, well, you own it, but you really don't own it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's sort of how they tell you. And it's not just Facebook, it's yeah. Twitter, Google. Plus. I mean, they, you can download what you put in there, but you can never really completely take it out. Right. I mean, that's literally what they're yeah. saying. Even if you delete the... If you delete it, it's still in there. Well, and, and the thing, too, is that the, the rules always change, but they don't always tell you what the rules are. Yeah. It's like right now, in my blog, I actually went on to Google, and I hit the little, I actually went through their, their user agreement, and currently, this is the right. current iteration that came up as of December, it says, information we share is the following. Some of it's with your consent, which it says, uh, we will share personal information with companies, organizations, or individuals outside of Google when we have your consent to do so. That's, that's their new policy. Right. Okay. However, it says with domain administrators. <laughs> we can give them right. whatever if they want. Google, if, if your Google account is managed for you by a domain administrator, then your domain administrator and resellers who provide user support to your organization will have access to your Google account information. This is what it doesn't say. What does that mean in English? When you sign in to Google mm. the first time or whatever, it says you allow us to share your stuff. And you say yes because you think you're saying yes to get a free Gmail account right. or whatever. Well, you're also saying they can give away right. your stuff. So at that point in time, if you don't opt out, which in many cases you'd think you're not going to get the free Gmail account or whatever. Or you don't even know how to opt out. Right. Because they don't make that easy to find either. Right. 
So all the, and there's a way you can actually go in into your Google profile right. and shut off a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, well, in fact, I, I talk all about that and take you through the, the steps in the process because if you want to go in there and, and eliminate your browsing history and shake out the cookies and all that, yeah. all you have to do is you click on the little button at the top of the page and then you click on where it says history and then you say, you know, eliminate... Right. And you can do it all through and, and all browsers through the end of time. And all browsers have these. But you have to you have to look for it. Right. And that's where most people don't even realize that that exists. Right. And I mean, I we also use uh, Advanced System Care, which actually goes out mm -hmm. and clears browser history and mm -hmm. those kinds of things on a regular basis. And I am keeping a lookout okay. for somebody calling it. Um, but all that stuff is in the article. And again, look at the article, read the article, take advantage of these simple things that you can do. To protect yourself. More no. importantly, you've got to start thinking about changing some of your habits. Right. Okay. Because again, if you're going to make it, it's like if you're going to leave your wallet sitting out on the front doorstep wide open, somebody's going to come along and they're going to take it from you. So it's the same thing when you're talking about protecting your information. Right. Don't make it easy for them because there are browsers, there are search engines that do not collect the personal information and that's the first that's where the rubber meets the road because if these places are scooping up all your information what do you think they're doing that for right. because they're going to sell it they're going to sell they're it they're not going they're not they're not going to keep bags and bags of data or they're going to use it for their own purposes to sell their products right. or the products of their clients well i mean either I, way they're well, going to use it to make money right and, and you're giving it you're giving them a service for free right okay and even goes beyond that because if you are like somebody that's Look, for instance, let's say you go to the drugstore and you've got one of their little user cards or whatever. That information is being yeah, tracked and that so. information is being sold as well. And when they come out with the new ones that actually have chips in it that actually send out signals, <laughs> which will be the next step that they're working on, the SID type cards, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be triple tracking you. So, I mean, I always tell people, I mean, when I was a computer consultant, one of the simplest things you could do was just have a good password. Mm -hmm. I mean... And don't write it and put it in a piece of paper right on top of your computer. I mean, right. people used to have to tape the password taped to the computer so anybody could walk up to it and get it. Right. I mean, it should be at least eight digits long. You should change it regularly. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very simple thing, but that's a behavioral thing that you have to do. Uh, you have to go in and clear these cookies out regularly. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, they're still there. They're tracking you. You have to run your antivirus, your anti-malware software all the time. You have to scan your computer on a regular basis. These are simple type things that people can do, but a lot of people just don't do them. Yeah, it's well, you know, up until recently, most people, even most industries, they really didn't pay attention to those details as to how big data was uh, being collected and used. In fact, uh, one of the things that I, I pointed out in my uh, blog is there are co several companies that are billion-dollar companies that literally are the biggest companies you've never heard of that make their money right. predominantly by collecting and reselling big data. They're data mining companies. Yeah, One's yeah. called Axiom. And Epsilon. And Epsilon, right. And those are two of the biggest players on the planet, billion-dollar companies that probably most people have never and, heard of. If I'm of. not mistaken, Axiom started out as an email company. <laughs> And and now they've grown into this big monster, you know, data center that yeah. can you know crunch out whatever they need to crunch out. Um, when I was going through the things, I, I found a lot of interesting articles, and I wanted to mention some of them because I want our our listeners to go to and look at them. Mm -hmm. One of them is by the New York Times, a very comprehensive article. It's called "The Age of Big Data," and it tells you about Nordstrom and all the different kinds of places and the lawsuits mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. NPR had a pretty good one, which I was surprised with because usually NPR is not that comprehensive. But they have one called "The Brave New World: Big Data, Big Danger," mm -hmm. and they're actually sounding the alarm. Uh, MIT Review they talk about the dictatorship of data, which is about people abusing data. Um, and then there were several other ones. And then there was the Russian one that I was telling you about. That's a really, that's like a 10 page article, but it's got a lot of good stuff in it about how people, how like Facebook hmm? is using this to do social manipulation and so on. Hmm? Um, so Farmers are worried about these sharing of big data now. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the information is just like, you think of the farmers, you know, years ago it was just mom and pop and, and a couple of cows but today it's big business yeah. and the information is very tightly held because of everything from the amount of water that they're able to receive i mean right right now california is in big trouble because of the big drought right. the types of seeds that you're using the types of the pesticides that they're away. using all these things are very important and it's, again if, if that information gets out information is power and, and ultimately information costs money right uh, there are speculators out there with with crops, you know, buying and selling uh, 
all kinds of commodities based on, on that information. So like I said, everybody is really starting to get the picture, at least business-wise, that big data is very important and you have to control that information. It's just at the consumer level, people are just sitting uh, out there in la-la land. Uh, no, no, uh, several shows ago, we talked about different things that you go, I mean, we talked about using other browsers other than Chrome or Firefox mm -hmm. or Internet Explorer. You, specifically, we talked about using Komodo, which doesn't track your stuff, but there's also uh, search engines that don't do it. Uh, one's called DuckDuckGo or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but plugins, if you're if you're insisting on using Chrome and Firefox and so on, there are lots of plugins that you can get. So there's one called Google Privacy that actually plugs into Chrome that actually shuts down some of what Google does. It also sends nasty grams to Google saying don't track me and all those kinds of things. There's a thing called Ad Blocker. There's one called Ad Block, Ad Remover, and one of my all-time favorite of trust mm -hmm. that I think people can use. Again, also if you have a good Big name antivirus. Many of those have plugins for your browsers. Yeah, and there's second tier like advanced things. system care, which right. we use, which is again that links on the or malware bytes and so on. Again, mm -hmm. these things you need to go through and use on your system on a regular basis. If you don't know where to get these, again, almost every browser has its own store, if you will. Right. Where you can get and find these plugins, and that's where I would recommend that they go looking for them. But you have to actively look for them. You know, mm -hmm. you have to actively look for ad blockers and all those kinds of things. You have to do something other than sit there and... They don't install themselves. Right, just play with <laughs> your computer. And they're available for your, your smartphones mm -hmm. and your tablets mm -hmm. and iPhones and all those other things. So that, that's what... I know we need to get to our the Worldwide Weird before the show is over. And I know that you had a couple of really good ones that, that you showed me earlier. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go to the lighter side. In fact, what's interesting about the... Uh, World Wide Web is it's worldwide. Yeah. And so every now and then we pick up some really funny little things that are going on around the world. Like one of the uh, weird and wacky pursuits in uh, Korea is apparently a little festival called the Mud Festival. They all look like they're bathing in mud or something. <laughs> I mean, I'm really not sure. <laughs> and they all look know. like Americans, yeah, too. I'm yeah, not really crazy. sure it was in Korea or whatever. Well, that's what it says, though. It says it's just outside of Seoul, Korea, where they have this festival. Or maybe year. they call it the American Festival, and all the Americans go there, and then they throw mud on. I was thinking, it looks like to me like a view from uh, Bike Week or something, you know, <laughs> after they go down to the beach and, and have had a few. Yeah. But, but one of the other ones I like was in England, uh, one of the things that they apparently like to do in southern England is to snorkel in some of these peat bogs. <laughs> cut like a you can see anything in a peat bog. <laughs> well, what yeah. they do is they cut a trench between it, and I guess it fills up like a canal, but still, it's got to be pretty nasty. <laughs> maybe, maybe those are the people that eventually migrate to the mud festival. Right, I'm yeah, not baby. Sure. <laughs> and then there was the one that I thought that was your favorite, which was the one right. where they were doing mountain bike chariot racing. Yeah, this is what I did like. It looks like it'd be fun unless you crashed. You well, know, like I said, I don't know if I'd want to be in the chariot going down the hill, you know, because... And the uh, chariots look sort of weird. It's like a trash can with two with wheels on the wheels. side. Like I said, that's the guy that's really uh, going to have to... Yeah. You okay. notice he's wearing a helmet, kind of, sort of. Yeah, well, at least <laughs> if he falls down on his head, maybe he won't break his head. I know we got a couple of minutes left. We still want to thank our, um, sponsors. our sponsors today. So we want to thank Tub King and Senior Bath, of course. You can, that's where you can get the most beautiful clawfoot tubs that the movie stars use in all yeah, the movies. And the, the, the high-tech walk-in tubs, too. The walk-in tubs right. with the, the hydro and the water and the hot water. I feel like getting one right now. I mean, I don't know about it. <laughs> well, I said, in fact, last time we, we posted a little uh, blog about them, I said, I wouldn't think of it as a tub. Think of it as an in-house spa. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you really think of it, but the jets and all that kind of stuff, and it takes a lot less water, and it's, you know, it's a pretty cool setup. Yeah, well, we keep trying to talk to bring one in here so we could do, like, the California, where they do the uh, radio show from the hot tub. Yeah, you know, yeah. we want to do that, but they, they, haven't, they haven't wheeled it in yet. Yeah. <laughs> hey, here we go. We have to make it happen. Uh, you can do it virtually, though. We want to really do we it. We want to really do it. And also, we want to thank MedMasters, the premier uh, medical social network. And that's where, you know, if you're in the medical industry and you want to make connections with other medical professionals mm -hmm. or you're looking to move up in your industry that's right. or you're just looking for a job in the medical industry, they have tons of great stuff on their site. And, of course, you can connect with people and they have educational videos and all that. Right. I mean, it's really a great site, and they don't sell their data to anybody. Yeah, we're that's down to about the last 60 seconds, so we might as well tell them what we're going to be doing next week because it's going to be an episode that's near and dear to your heart. It's called Social Media Madness Roundup. Why don't you yeah. tell them a little bit? We're going to be talking about all the exciting things that have been happening in social media other than, you know, the, the big data. 
<laughs> but we'll be talking about Twitter, Facebook. We'll talk about the big, the top five, because all the big things they've all had a lot of changes yeah. in the last six months, yeah. and we haven't done a. a, a I think we're even going to talk a little about Pinterest, which we haven't talked about. Right. We'll talk a little bit about Pinterest. We'll talk a little bit about Instagram. Also, we'll, we'll roll them in there too. Until next time. Keep working. <laughs>